Hey INFP, it's Eric Dor here, your friendly neighborhood INFJ, here to talk to you today about 10 things that we love about you as an INFP. And in today's video, you're going to learn about all the things that make INFPs wonderful and why INFPs are needed in this world. First of all, INFP, you do what is right, even if it's difficult. That's one thing that everyone loves about INFP, the INFP personality type will do what is ethically right, even if it's difficult and even if it's at the expense of themselves and immediate gain or immediate power. Yeah, INFPs will put themselves in complicated situations. They will make themselves the bad guy at work. They will do what needs to be done in order to do what is right in the longer perspective. Yeah, INFPs look at and understand that we need to do and behave in a way that is ethically correct. And if we don't, and if we are inauthentic, or if we lie, or if we hide things or cover things up, that's going to become a problem later on. That means INFPs bring problems to our attention. They make us aware of what's right and wrong. They make sure that our moral compass stays in check. And that means our mission stays in check. They maintain the integrity of our human mission and of our human quest. That means as an INFP, you make sure that everyone is on the right track and that everyone is following in the mission and that people are not getting lost or sidetracked or that people are not letting themselves get corrupted on the way. You recognize that if you lose yourself trying to do what you want to do, you lose the purpose of your mission. You know that it's all about the journey before destination. Now, as a natural wanderer, how about you find yourself wandering with your fingers down to the subscribe button? Yeah, let yourself get lost in my channel and check out my other videos. So, do not doubt yourself. That means if you are at a position at work where you think something is wrong, or if you are at a situation in your relationships or with your friends where you feel like you should speak up, do not doubt yourself. Speak out. Speak out about what you want. Speak out about what uh, you feel is right. Recognize that this is your purpose, your duty as an INFP to be uh, the warning signal, to be the whistleblower, to be the person that will alert the world to problems that are happening so that we can all make sure that we are doing the right thing and that we are doing something that is. Reason number two that I love INFPs. You are wandering souls. Something I see with INFP is that INFPs have the souls of wanderers. INFPs recognize that any path could lead to amazing insight and growth. INFPs recognize that no matter what happens, everything is learning. That means INFPs can surrender themselves to the unknown, walk down new paths, make new choices, and put themselves in new situations just for the chance to gain those experiences and insight. What I see with INFPs is that INFPs are highly flexible. That means if you have an idea, INFPs are highly open-minded. Generally, the INFP is going to say, yeah, sure, let's try it. Because even if they don't like it, or even if they don't know if it's the, like gonna be fun, <laughs> In the end, they feel, oh, but I can learn from something from it and it could still be interesting and you never know. Yeah, INFPs live by that singular quote, you never really know. So let yourself wander and let yourself feel lost. Remember that there is a strength in feeling lost. Only those that want to be truly original can feel lost. And feeling lost is the part of following a new path. Feeling lost is a feeling of trail and excitement and of discovery. Feeling lost is a chance to learn new things. Those that never feel lost never learn new things. Those that never feel lost always walk simple, easy paths. Those that never feel lost always do and follow along with the stream. But you're not meant to do that. You're meant to create new paths, to explore new waves, and to discover new spaces. So, yeah, feeling lost. Is that really so bad? Reason number three that I love INFPs. INFPs are mystics. Yeah, INFPs have a mysterious aura. A lot of the time, you never really know what an INFP is thinking. They have this twinkle in their eye. You know that they're seeing something. You know that there is something that 
they are aware of that you are not aware of. You know that they are operating at a higher frequency. INFPs have a sixth, a third eye, not a sixth eye. I don't know if that's possible, but a third eye in a sense that INFPs, they pick up on subtle nuances in what you say. They hear things that you wouldn't expect them to hear. They see things in you that you wouldn't expect them to see. And that means they have this profound ability to gain deeper insight into things, into life, into the future, into anything really. INFPs are mystics. They have this natural spiritual inclination. They uh, are not afraid of spirituality, not afraid of uh, reflecting on uh, chakras or alternative dimensions or the future or time travel. No concept is foreign to an INFP. All things are interesting. INFPs enjoy it even if it's just as an imaginative relief, even if it's just as a way to exercise your imagination, even if it's just uh, to uh, consult with your unconscious. INFPs enjoy all things spiritual because there is something fun about it. It doesn't even have to be proven. It doesn't even have to be scientific. There is something fun and interesting about it. And it's real because it exists here. And if it exists here, it's real. That means as an INFP, don't fear spirituality in a sense. Recognize that spirituality is not and does not have to be anything dangerous. It can just be a fun exercise for the mind. It can just be a way for your imagination to stretch itself as widely as possible. And a person with a higher imagination is going to be more creative, is going to see things that other people don't, is going to be open to things that other people are close to. Number four, what I love about INFPs is your strong individuality. That means INFPs march to the beat of their own drum. INFPs don't follow the simple recipe of life, though sometimes you can be sometimes a bit too constrained by what you've been in the past. INFPs have this amazing ability to listen to themselves, to recognize that what I want is and does not have to be the same as what everybody else wants. And just because everybody else wants something, it's no reason for me to want something. Everybody else wants to wear the new uh, trendy item. I don't care. <laughs> I want to wear what I want to wear. Uh, everyone else is looking for that new shiny gadget. I don't need that. I like my phone. I like what I have. INFPs have this contentedness with themselves, have this contentedness with and this uh, trust in their own individuality. And as an INFP, you should honor that in yourself. There is nothing wrong with walking your own path or not being trendy or not following the stream. Having different opinions does not make you wrong or damaged or broken. Being different does not mean that there is something wrong with you. It just means that you are you. And if everybody was themselves and if everybody uh, followed their own voice, everybody would feel different and everybody would feel weird. And feeling weird is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Reason number five, I love INFPs because they introspect. INFPs, they take time to listen to themselves. INFPs, they take time to hear their own voice, to see their own feelings. You know, there is a bad rumor going on about INFPs. I don't know if you've heard it, but a lot of people think that INFPs, because they are introverted feeling types, that they are highly subjective. Yeah. INFPs, they are completely rational people that live their life based on their own emotions instead of logic or instead of evidence. Oh, that's terrible. Why should you be subjective when you can be objective? Being objective is obviously so much better than being subjective, right? Wrong. So very wrong. There is a power to being subjective and being inclined and to listening to yourself and to knowing and understanding your emotions. As an INFP, you know that you are subjective. You know that you are influenced by your own emotions, that you have your own perspective. INFPs are therefore deeply modest. <laughs> really, that's number six, <laughs> reason number six why I love INFPs. But honestly, to finish this point, that means INFPs are aware that they are being irrational in a world where everyone thinks that they are being highly rational. While everyone else thinks that they are being highly rational, Everyone else is constantly clouded unconsciously by their own subjectivity. Yeah, everyone is reading into the evidence that they think they like. ENTJs, they have this own personal gut feeling about what they want. And they selectively choose anything that agrees with that opinion. INTPs, they think they're being very rational. 
but a lot of the time they're being very subtly influenced by uh, social norms and by expectations and the public around them, the public appearance of them. INFPs know their own feelings and know their own emotions and motivation. And that means when you gain information and insight and data, you recognize that you have a subjective viewpoint. You recognize you have your personal viewpoint on this and you recognize that other people can have different viewpoints on this. And that is what gives you the power to see things clearly. You check yourself, you check your own values. And that means you can check and be aware of your own subjectivity. Well, reason number six, INFPs are modest. INFPs rarely want to talk about themselves as being better than anyone else. They don't want to rate themselves or their skills or their skill level. INFPs don't want to brag about things that they are good at. They don't need to do that. INFPs don't feel a need to make everything look neater or more beautiful for everyone else. INFPs don't care about how they are presented to the world. INFPs don't feel a need to gloss up or hide uncomfortable things about themselves so that other people will like them. No, INFPs, they're just modest. What you see is what you get. INFPs are what you see is what you get. INFPs are really just what they are, nothing more and nothing less. And that's what's great about INFPs. INFPs have this modesty that allows them to understand that everyone has their power. Everyone has. And so as an INFP, what I want you to remember is uh, just like everyone else has their power and has their intelligence, so do you. There is nothing wrong with recognizing your power or ability. There is nothing wrong with recognizing that you're skilled. And your modesty is a strength. <laughs> Actually, your modesty is a superpower. And uh, recognize that everyone has their beauty and so do you. Reason number seven why I love INFPs. INFPs have a quiet power, a subtle influence. Yeah, did you know that in meeting rooms, uh, when INFPs stay quiet, everyone is looking at them, you know. Um, when meetings and decisions are presented and a uh, decision has to be made, everyone looks at INFP, like they just look at INFP. And the INFP doesn't have to say anything. Actually, everyone is like, hmm, what does the INFP think about this? Like over time, when you get established at the workplace or when you start getting to know your friends, people realize that, okay, this person knows stuff. This person has opinions. They might not be overt or in your face about it. INFPs are never going to uh, push their values on you uh, like a brute unless you really offended them. No, INFPs are generally quiet, uh, soft, subtle in how they express themselves. But you can still see it and people still want to know it. People really have a fascination with INFP values. People really have a fascination with INFP values. That means people are going to look at you all the time like, what does this person feel about this? How does this person respond to that? How does this person think about this? Yeah, people are constantly gauging your reaction as an INFP. They're listening to your body language, listening to subtle signals that you're sending out. They're trying to understand what you want. And uh, basically, as soon as they figure out what you want, they're going to be like, okay, I want this. <laughs> so that's what happens. A lot of the time, uh, you don't even recognize your own power because it's so subtle. People are looking at you and then they're basing their decisions and opinions of your moral compass because they know that you have a strong moral compass. They care about it. They want to know about it. And they're going to look at you. Okay, uh, that person seems to dislike this decision or seems to have a negative reaction or seems to frown a little bit. Like I noticed a small twitch in the eye when I said that. It's probably something that person doesn't like. Okay, uh, I don't like it either. <laughs> no, I don't like it either because the INFP doesn't like it. So that's the INFP subtle influence. Yeah, you're subtly changing the mind of everyone else around you. You don't, you don't even know it. So recognize that power. I love INFPs that express themselves. And this is something people get wrong about introverted feeling. People think introverted feeling is about being self-absorbed, but introverted feeling is about being self-expressive. Introverted feeling is not meant to stay inside. You are not meant to hide your feelings, values, or views away from everyone else. You're meant to put it to practice in your life. That means your workplace, your lifestyle, your relationships, the people you keep in your life, everything you do should be a reflection of who you are and what you want and what you value. As an INFP, you want to create the life that matches and aligns with who you are and what you want. So constantly find ways to express yourself in what you do. Find ways to 
bring yourself into your work to create and make everything you do your own to create and give everything your own personal signature don't just follow the guides lines or instructions but find your own way of doing things a way that works and feels right for you as an infp be self-expressive be yourself express yourself talk to your boss your partner your friends about who you are and what you want and what you need because when INFPs let their individuality shine, when INFPs allow themselves to express themselves, they also teach other people that it's okay. It's okay to be yourself. It's okay to have your own way of being. In a world where everyone feels they have to be somebody else, be the person that shows that it's okay to be yourself. That's one thing that I really love about INFPs. Reason number nine why I love INFPs. You are artistically inclined. That means you make things, you make the world more beautiful. Where everyone seeks straight lines, you like curves, you like twists, you like edges, you like flaws, you like subtle things. You know art is messy, and you know there's nothing wrong with being messy. Being messy and letting things be messy means letting things be real. When things are clean, organized, neat, and layered perfectly, Things are boring, things are empty, and things are soulless. When you walk into a home where everything is arranged perfectly, you think it's a model home. Nobody lives here, it's just a model home. When you go into a home of an INFP, and you see the different types of old and classic furniture, when you see the small edges and scratch marks, when you see the little um, paintings that they got, when you see the things that they have at home, you see that this is a person that has a soul. And this environment, this place makes me feel like I am at a person's home. So INFPs make people feel at home by being artistic. INFPs make their workplace a personal place, a place where people can feel warm and can feel welcome. INFPs peace turn an impersonal and boring world to a messy but real human world reason number 10 why i love infps infps are natural counselors yeah infp you counsel people all the time people come to you for advice people listen to you people look at what you do and they try to model that yeah people see infps they see your integrity they see that you make choices, they see that you listen to yourself, they see that you are self-aware, that you understand emotions, that you understand feelings. And because they want to understand feelings too, they come to you. They see you as an expert, they see you as a medium, they see you as a seer, they see you as the uh, Carl Jung reborn, a natural psychologist, a person that just knows, that just sees, that just understands. And so when people see you, they want to open up to you, they want to talk about things that they feel they want to process things that they're going through and you give people a space to do that you give people a space to be themselves people are going to tell you as an open assertive and self-aware and self-loving infp they're going to tell you that uh, you make them feel understood you make them feel open they can say things to you that they can't say to anyone else and that's your infp super so these were my 10 reasons why I love INFPs. What's your reason to love INFPs? What do you love about yourself? Remember this, you need to love yourself to be yourself. If you can't love yourself, you can't be yourself. So if you feel like, um, I don't know if I'm that person, I don't know if I have these qualities as an INFP, I don't know if I feel that way about myself, find ways to learn to feel that way about yourself. Remember that you have a responsibility to be yourself and to love yourself and to respect yourself. Nobody is going to do that for you. You're going to have to start doing that yourself. INFP, remember, your first mission is to love yourself. And only you can love yourself from yourself. That means nobody else can give you that internal satisfaction or reminder. Everything everyone else tells you, everything I say in this video, it's nice, it's good to hear, cool, other people like me. But you need to feel for yourself that you are worthy and that you have a part and a purpose in this world. So... Let yourself feel that for yourself. And if you don't feel that way, take some time for yourself. Take some time to be yourself. Take some time to do something you love. And remember, if you can't be yourself and if you can't live the life that you want and if you can't live your purpose, you're going to feel cut off. You're not going to feel good. So 
remember the importance of creating a sphere and atmosphere at home and in your relationships and with your friends where you can be yourself. Otherwise, yeah, you're gonna hate yourself. <laughs> so yeah, it's very important. Now, how about you check out my last video, Why the World Needs INFPs. Thank you all and see you all later.